Chances are, if you're watching this video, then you're suffering from chronic urinary tract infections, or you've perhaps had urinary tract infections in the past, and even though your physician is telling you that you don't have an infection or you're not having an active infection, that you're still having symptoms of what feels like a urinary tract infection. And so today in this video, I wanna address what might be going on and what you can do to kind of help yourself. I'm Hina Sheth. I'm a pelvic floor and orthopedic physical therapist here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and our clinic, Rebalance Physical Therapy, treats symptoms like this all the time. We actually are specialists in treating pelvic floor and pelvic pain symptoms. If you are someone who has been suffering from urinary tract infections, then typically what ends up happening is anytime you have an infection, this creates like an environment of inflammation within your pelvis. And you have lots of things in your pelvis. You have your organs such as your bladder, your rectum, and your uterus, but you also have a whole host of muscles known as your pelvic floor muscles. Now, this is a model of the pelvis. These, This is the spine over here. These are the two pelvic bones, and you have this other kind of cobra head type bone called your sacrum, which is right back here. You've got your pubic bone in the front right over here. So this pelvic model, if you look and flip it to the inside and you take all of your organs out, you're gonna see all of these red kind of things here, and these are your pelvic floor muscles. They consist of a group of 14 muscles that line the inside of your pelvis. And you can also feel them from the outside. So if you flip this pelvis around and you're looking at it from the bottom, then your sit bones are here. You have your pubic bone over here and you have your tailbone over here. And you can see here that these muscles kind of form like this diamond trampoline type shape, these muscles here, they have these attachments to all of these areas. And so 14 muscles between here and here um, are basically a group of pelvic floor muscles. And what can happen is that these muscles, because of that infection and this inflammation that has kind of set in, it can actually change the nature of these muscles, meaning that these muscles can actually become tight and restricted and when they become tight and restricted, they are not happy. Now, how do we know this? There was a experiment that was done. They basically took a group of rats. They injected their uterus with Evans blue dye mustard oil. And then they basically followed these rats to see, hey, if we created an inflammation within the uterus, then where does this blue dye kind of go to? Does it stay in the uterus? or does it actually move out into the other tissues? And what they found in this rat study is once they followed them um, for several weeks, you started to see that the red, which is basically the dye, started moving out of the uterus and into the back, the abdomen, the thighs, and the, the feet of these rats. So what did this indicate? When you have an inflammation going on within a certain part of a pelvic organ, there's lots of nerves that talk to each other. There's nerves from organs that actually talk to the muscles and vice versa of this pelvic area. And so this dye actually moved out into the areas of the tissue of the muscles and what's called the fascia of these rats. The dye basically wasn't necessarily in the uterus anymore. So what this means is, in a human being that has infections and this inflammation that starts up in their organ, so in this example, a urinary tract infection, which happens within the urethra and the bladder, that the muscles and the tissue around that area, so like we talked about the pelvic floor muscles, can also become involved. They become tight and restricted and they're not happy. And so when these muscles become tight and restricted, I use this all the time in a lot of my videos. You can think of it as like a tight fisted kind of situation that's going on within the muscles of your pelvic floor. And so when you have a tight fist, you can feel like there's not much blood flow going on. And also if you held this for a long period of time, it would become actually quite painful. And so this is what happens in these 14 muscles of the pelvic floor, but not only does this happen in the muscles of the pelvic floor, but this also happens actually a lot of the muscles that are surrounding the pelvic 
area, as well as the hip, the low back, and the abdomen. So you can see here that the pelvis, all right, which is this like heart-shaped structure, has a lot of attachments of not only the pelvic floor muscles, but other muscles that that are on the ab that are the abdomen the thighs, you have the glutes in the back, the inner thigh muscles, and then you have a lot of other hip muscles that also have attachments there. And so you can see here from the back that you actually have pelvic floor muscles, which are these right here, that have actually attachments to the hip. So for some people that maybe this started out as a urinary tract infection, and now there is no infection that's actually going on, is that they're starting to develop low back pain or hip pain or even other lower abdominal type pain. And for some people, this is sometimes even can kind of move into other symptoms like rectal symptoms, bladder frequency, urgency, burning, um, and a whole host of other symptoms. I can't list them all here. But if this is what is happening to you, then the likelihood that these muscles are involved, especially if you've already been to like urologists and gynecologists and urogynecologists and you're not getting any answers, then this is the likelihood of what is going on. Why does this typically happen? Why are some people more vulnerable than other people? Now, for some people who are not in the necessarily the perimenopause or the menopausal state, the reason why this can happen, you can have lots of things in your history that may have led up to this. Sometimes these pelvic floor muscles can actually have some tightness in them from childhood. If as a young child, you had a lot of constipation or you had any type of anxiety or stress that then tends to also create tensioning in muscles. Or you just have a natural tendency to grip very hard with your core, or your abdominals, or even your glute muscles. Those types of posturings um, or abnormal posturings or tendencies, all of those things can tend to give you this vulnerability because these pelvic floor muscles are already tight. And then you add an infection um, and that creates this inflammation on top of that. And it doesn't take much for that to start to cause symptoms. So that is possibly some of the reasons why, um, you know, when you're younger or throughout, you know, your life, this could lead to something like this. Now, for those who are possibly in the perimenopausal state, possibly menopausal state, then changes in the pH of the vaginal area can actually make you more vulnerable to urinary tract infections. So if you're more vulnerable to having these infections, then this can also then lead to a vulnerability of the pelvic floor as well to start getting involved. So those are just some of the reasons. There can be many other reasons why this may have started, but these are just some of the common ones that we typically see. The other thing is if you have any history of some comorbidities, such as do you have have um, endometriosis, which is like um, tissue that grows outside of the uterus that can cause a lot of scarring. Do you have a vulnerability to other bladder conditions, such as something called interstitial cystitis, um, which is like inflammation of the bladder um, that certain people are vulnerable to? So some of these comorbidities can actually also make you more vulnerable to um, the symptoms of what feels like a urinary tract infection and the vulnerability of these muscles getting involved. If this is resonating with you and you're like, yes, finally, somebody understands this and all these doctors that I've been to can't figure out what's going on with me, then the likelihood is this is most likely what's going on. So what do we do about it? Now, the treatment is not as easy as, hey, do these three things and it's gonna completely get you better. We've actually created a online program that goes through like 40 videos of all the things that you need to do that may start jumpstarting this and improving this condition, you know, as soon as you start to kind of incorporate a lot of the treatment techniques. And what are these techniques? A lot of it consists of actually directly getting onto these pelvic floor muscles, working on them yourself. The other thing is there's also indirect ways that you can actually work on really reducing the tensioning in these muscles through like different types of breathing and postural techniques. Um, and then there's also specific release techniques that we teach you with like props and tools and things like that that you have at your home with like tennis balls and things like that. And then also specific targeted stretches that address some of the major muscle groups that we see all the time in our clinic that most people have 
that are involved um, within this pelvic pain condition. So if this is you or someone that you know, then I would encourage you to share this video. You can be really helping somebody quite a bit because there's so much frustration around this topic that we hear every single day. So please share, please subscribe. If you are someone that really wants to get this started and you wanna start treating yourself ASAP, then all the information is within the uh, information box below or possibly there might be a pop-up somewhere or at the end of the video where you have um, access um, right away um, to that video. If you are also someone that wants an online consultation or a video consultation, then we have that available to you as well, um, where you can do it at the comfort of your home and you can start getting some answers um, and guidance on what you should or should not be doing. So all of that information is down below. I hope this video was helpful to you guys and um, have a wonderful day. Take care.